The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, good morning to our friends down under, and uh, good afternoon if you're uh, across the ditch in New Zealand. Lovely to have you all with us, um, and uh, let's see who we've got. Everyone, lots of people. Uh, would somebody please just post in the question column that you uh, how the volume is? Can you all hear me okay? Norbert, up in Canada, the cold country. Yes, yeah, sounds good. Well, if we can get to Norbert, we can probably get to everyone. Thank you, Norbert. You're always first on the ball. Thanks so much. Okay, let's see who's here today, boy. Okay, we've got a big roll up. Adrian down in uh, South Australia. Alan, yeah, Al, Alan's brought a friend with him, Alan A. Uh, thank you, Alan. Um, you sent me a very polite uh, email saying, uh, could you bring a friend to watch the webinar? Uh, and uh, thank you for that, Alan. The answer, of course, is yes. In fact, the answer is more than yes. The answer is if you have any people who are interested in uh, futures uh, or Forex, for goodness sake, please invite them to the Daniel Code. Uh, they can have a free trial. They can um, see everything that we do here. They can uh, uh, have, of course, join the free webinars. But uh, the more people we have, uh, the better. Uh, and we don't have very many, as you know, we're a very, very small business. Uh, we've never advertised, so uh, we rely on word of mouth. So uh, if you can uh, push someone in our direction, I'd be most appreciative. Uh, the Daniel Code uh, really is uh, the greatest secret never told. Uh, so uh, we need more people. If you can do that, I'd be grand. Okay. Uh, so Dean's with us. Uh, uh, Good, good to be with it. Bloody cold, he said. <laughs> uh, well, you people choose to live there. Hello, John. Enjoying a nicely chilly Canadian barley and hops. Well, that sounds very good. Mixture. Uh, following the more recent occurrences in the oil market, many of our oil producers' assets in Alberta are uh, shutting down. Uh, Thomas L., he's doing a uh, tutorial now. He's worked in the oil business. Uh, Thomas Grant. Uh, well, of course... Um, they should learn to trade futures uh, with the Daniel Code. They wouldn't have those problems, would they? <laughs> uh, Joel uh, in uh, Vero Beach, uh, Florida, uh, says um, uh, nothing, but he's with us. Uh, he's just right here. Thank you, Joel. The rest of your post has disappeared. So if there was a question, pop it in. I'll answer all of these uh, questions uh, before the end of the day. Okay, so Alvin, Alan and his guest, thank you, and uh, bring more. Uh, bring more people. We need them. Alex, good to have you with us. Andrew, Bill, Carol, a special greeting to Carol. We don't have many ladies, and uh, we'd like to have a lot of ladies. Uh, good to have you with us. Sim, Sim's over in um, uh, Malaysia, as is his uh, friend Chun, uh, and they're both with us today. Uh, Sim is a very interesting character. He's a professional musician. Uh, he plays the French horn with uh, the uh, Malaysian orchestra. Uh, and uh, on the side, he's a, um, he teaches scuba diving. He's a uh, licensed scuba diver, diving instructor, as is his wife, um, whose name is uh, Peck Sim. Uh, so welcome to uh, you, uh, Sim, and uh, Peck Sim, if she's with you, and also to Chun. Uh, great to have you with us. These guys uh, uh, have just uh, in the process of doing a uh, tutorial. Um, and going to become gun trader Chase, uh, the man who uh, got me to give up smoking. <laughs> Good to have you with us, Chase. <clears throat> My health hasn't improved, uh, Chase. I was uh, pretty healthy beforehand, uh, and uh, I'm, I'll <laughs> peck him is sleeping. Good, don't wake her up. <laughs> uh, and uh, he's got no audio, listen mode only. Ouch. Uh, anyway, uh, Sim, uh, this video will be posted um, some hours after we finish, as soon as uh, Terry's uh, processed the uh, video, we'll uh, we post that on the website so you'll be able to catch up with all of that. Uh, and uh, there we are, Colin's with us. Uh, Craig, nice to have you. Daniel, yes. Dave V, tutorial guy. Dean's a multi-tutorial guy. Eric's a tutorial guy. The tutorial people here. Gary's with us. Uh, Gig, uh, he's gig doing it. Gig's down in. Uh, uh, 
South Carolina or North Carolina geek, one of the two anyway. Um, and uh, he's a very keen golfer. He's doing a tutorial at the moment. He's been trading for a long time. He's going to be a great trader. Uh, Graham, uh, Jay, over there in uh, New Zealand. Graham, glad to have you with us. Graham did a tutorial with us back in 2016 and has just uh, rejoined North Carolina for gig, he says. North Carolina, good. Uh, uh, and uh, good to have you with us, Adrian. Yes, and um, uh, excuse me for cutting across. Graham is uh, uh, now uh, started to trade the Daniel Code again. He's been absent for a few years. Uh, Greg's with us. Greg's a uh, fund manager, wealth advisor in um, one of my favorite places, uh, Colorado Springs. Great to have you with us, Greg. I've been promising you um, a new program, uh, which is pretty interesting, uh, what you've asked for. The uh, uh, Greg's um, I'm going to offend you later on today, Greg, so let me apologize uh, in advance. ETFs have been uh, having a bad trot lately, and I know you trade ETFs for your clients. Um, and um, I'll get that uh, to you. It's new, going to be a new program. For people who've got uh, big uh, interest in stocks and shares, uh, which will tell them uh, when the Daniel Code thinks it's time to um, uh, get your uh, – uh, waterproof pants on. Uh, Hank down in uh, uh, Hank down in uh, the Hunter Valley. G great to have you with us, Harold, our steadfast man. The other day, last week, I was telling you that the Daniel Code picked the 2009 crash low in the S&P at 666, exactly to the day and the tick. And uh, I said uh, that some of our clients uh, were still with us. Uh, were with us then and still with us today. And uh, uh, Harold uh, from Reading is one of those guys who kindly said yes, uh, yes he did. Uh, Jeff, he's a tutorial guy. Good to have you with us, Jeff. And the next Jeff, he's a uh, farmer in the Midwest. He's going to, he's with the Daniel Code. He's thinking about doing a, a tutorial in due course. Joel, good to have you with us. Uh, John, uh, uh, John Chi Wow, good to have you with us, John. Uh, welcome. Uh, Justin is uh, Hank's son. He's a new father. <laughs> uh, the joys of life, mate. You don't know what you've let yourself in for. Uh, Kyle's with us. Kyle's uh, uh, comes from a, a lovely little town called Waitomo in New Zealand. Um, and uh, those of you who've been there will know that that's where the uh, magnificent, amazing glowworm caves are. Uh, you go in a, a raft uh, or a beer vessel of some sort through these caves and the ceiling to just littered with these glowworms. That's an extraordinary thing to see. Uh, Kyle uh, works uh, in that area uh, and he's uh, been trading for a while and he's now doing a Daniel Code tutorial. Great to have you with us. Uh, Les uh, is uh, uh, with us uh, now. Uh, he's uh, Les M from New Zealand. Good to have you with us, Les. Uh, Mark and Marty, yep, that's okay, better move on. We've got a big, big roll up today. Uh, Michael uh, Mitsos, uh, gun trader, uh, Daniel Code tutorial client from many years ago. Uh, Michael Pell, the same, the Panama man. Good to have you with us, mate. Uh, the Murph, of course, is with us as always. Terrific Milton. Uh, Nathan, yeah, tutorial guys. Norbert, he's, of course, a tutorial guy up in uh, uh, far north uh, Canada. Uh, Peter, uh, a couple of Peters, three or four Peters. Uh, Philip, Robert, yes, yeah, Sammy. Uh, Scott, yes, good to have you with us. Stephen, he's a uh, tutorial guy. Sue, uh, up in Cairns, is a uh, tutorial lady, very good trader. Uh, interesting story. She came to me and said, I've been trading for 12 years. Don't hold me to that exactly. She might have said 20, I'm not sure. But she said, I've, I've had a lot of wins and a lot of losses and never got ahead. And she loves the Daniel Code. She said she did a tutorial. She says it's the first time uh, I've been able to be a consistent winner. And she's a she's a good trader. Terrific. Uh, good to have you with us. And Terry's with us. Our uh, uh, the magical Terry, uh, our uh, webmaster up in uh, up in uh, southern Canada um, and uh, Chatham. Uh, thank you for being with us, Terry. And uh, I want to congratulate you on your fine banner that you can see up at the moment. Um, I must say, I personally uh, have never met a lady that wears uh, purple nail polish, uh, but I guess that just goes to show you what a, a sheltered life I've led. <laughs> uh, but <coughs> she looks uh, she looks the part, and she obviously uh, bites her nails. So I guess she works for one of these uh, fun managers who's uh, had a bit of fun lately. Uh, Todd uh, Toddy over in. Uh, 
California. Good to have you with us, Todd. He's a tutorial guy. Great to have you. Uh, Trevor and, of course, uh, Vicky. Vicky's another lady who's with us. Uh, Vicky, so lovely to have you. Always uh, wonderful to have uh, ladies with us. We need more. Uh, if you know any more ladies, uh, tell them to come and join the Daniel Code. They can have a free trial. Uh, just see what we do and uh, get themselves involved in uh, a virtual money machine, which is pretty much what the Daniel Code is. Uh, so let's uh, move on, folks. Um, much to, much to talk about today. A lot of it's very, very, very funny. I mean, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't laugh at other people's misfortunes. But you know, uh, I've spent my life realizing that the big names in the business are just uh, they all got the same story. They're great marketers, uh, well connected, have a lovely story, and they're they're, they're marketers. But basically. Uh, without defaming the whole world. They don't know much about trading. Uh, so let's move on. Markets are rational, orderly, and sometimes predictable, as you will know. Uh, in the uh, recent uh, past, we picked the high in uh, February with a uh, uh, Daniel Code blue line trade and a TO3 trade, and we picked the low uh, to um, a handful of ticks. Uh, so yes, it's uh, accurate, uh, incredibly accurate, and uh, sometimes predictable. So. Uh, I want to just sort of talk a bit about um, uh, the difference between um, investing and trading. Um, investors um, uh, have um, a massive uh, benefit because uh, people who advise investors, investors, uh, there's a continual uh, market promotion uh, by uh, all parties uh, on stocks and shares. You should have your retirement money in stocks. You should buy stocks. They always go up. They're safe. Uh, well, uh, over a long period of time, that's true. But um, uh, there are also periods of time when they go down and it gets pretty savage. Uh, we haven't really seen that yet in this uh, present pullback, um, but uh, I suspect that we're going to. Um, so uh, the key thing about in investors is that they, they have to have a view of the market. Um, they have to either be bullish or bearish, uh, or maybe they're flat. <coughs> Most of them are one or the other. Uh, the vast majority of them are, are per permeables always. Um, and uh, they then seek niche sectors of the market and have a view about those sectors as well. And um, a lot of them use ETFs to uh, load up on one view or protect against um, um, uh, another view that they may have. Um, CTA, Certified Trading Advisors, are a big part of the market um, and they base their allocations on a formula where price, price drives allocation. Uh, most of them buy that formula from uh, one of the big boys, Nomura or one of them like that. Uh, it's not terribly accurate but at least uh, they put themselves uh, on the side of the angels uh, that they're uh, investing more when the market's uh, uh, going up and they're um, investing less when the market's going down. Uh, very, very few of them um, actually uh, ever hedge their position. Uh, so uh, most investors seek a particular market segment, equities, bonds, uh, mortgages, distressed assets, what have you. Um, and all of them there require the players uh, to have a view that should be them, T-H-E-M, not there. Uh, forgive me if there's the odd typo through here, uh, folks, please. Um, uh, we're all locked up at home at the moment, so I'm uh, not at the office. Um, and I have uh, two adult children here. Um, and <laughs> uh, Mrs Needham's uh, been in hospital, but she's coming home today. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, the good news. Um, so some of these folks will uh, try to have a balanced portfolio. Uh, to most people, balanced portfolio means a balance between um, stocks and shares and bonds. Um, and then there are other views of what a balanced portfolio is. But either way, um, you have to have a view about it if that's what you're doing. Um, and then they um, seek all sorts of affirmation that uh, um, they read reports, they get advice from the majors, um, uh, they read the teacups, uh, the tea leaves, whatever else. But a better word for having a view is bias. Um, and uh, all investors, almost all investors, um, are biased. Let me see if I've uh, kicked something here. Now let's move on. Um, so we're moving on here. Wait till that's changed for you. Uh, so this is uh, Frank DB's uh, comments uh, for this week. He posts these every Monday if you're interested. Uh, for those of you who want to subscribe to the fourth seal, uh, it's not listed as uh, something you can uh, automatically 
uh, click on or off on our uh, website. Um, all you need to do though is drop a line to Terry at support at the danielcode.com. Let them know which uh, one of the three markets that we cover with the fourth seal, which is uh, uh, S&P, crude oil and gold. Let them know which one you're interested in and he'll be happy to uh, click you on and uh, have you subscribe to one or more of those um, uh, markets. Uh, if you subscribe to all of them, I think he gives you a discount. Uh, or maybe if you just subscribe for a long period, he'll uh, give you a discount. Anyway, uh, send an email to Terry. Tell him what you want. He'll uh, he'll fi fix you up. Um, so um, uh, Frank's of the view, um, every analyst said this would not be a V-shaped recovery. But so far, that's exactly what unfolded. Uh, with uh, Frank, as you know, he's a Belgian gentleman. Uh, English is not his first language, uh, so we don't uh, we don't correct any little typos that he makes. Uh, we want uh, his authentic voice uh, to talk to you. Um, and and what he's saying about here is that um, uh, he says he'll we'll see uh, new highs uh, or. Uh, he's not sure if he'll see new highs this year. Cycle suggests more upside. Um, so uh, he's pretty bullish um, about it, um, uh, and uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not in that camp. But uh, uh, here's his uh, comment on fourth seal, or the fourth seal's comment on crude oil. I should say um, nothing new in crude. Go, that was the previous week. Go to this week. Uh, it's got a 44 cycle top coming up. This market should go higher into late this month. Uh, after that, there's a 59 cycle low coming on uh, May the 4th. Uh, that should give us the next swing low. For now, we look for buy signals into late this month. The DC signals will guide as well. The DC signals have had you short until now. Here are the uh, Daniel Code signals. This is crude oil. Um, you can see we had a TO3 sell right at the high of the last rally. We then had a minor TO3 plus buy uh, that was elected, went up, reversed and uh, failed and made an outside bar. Uh, for those of you who've been with us for a while, you'll have heard me talk about uh, the must stop and reverse of if an outside bar occurs on the day of a new entry. Uh, in this case, the buy was the new entry uh, and when that failed and took out the low, uh, of the either the inside bar or the previous bar, depending on how you're trading, uh, you needed <coughs> to stop and reverse. Um, and we talked about that many times over the years. Uh, and there's a reason for that because outside bars tend to be directional indicators. Uh, so we don't want to be long sitting at the end of an outside bar that's failed. Uh, so we take our mandatory stop and reverse short. Um, and uh, from that time, we've been this thing's jumping around a bit today, you'll have to forgive me. Um, and uh, from that day, um, uh, we've been short. So we actually uh, uh, got short. Uh, a bit hard to see with the uh, uh, contract rollover in there, but there we are, we got short. Uh, the signal came uh, for May uh, the 3rd. Carry it forward through all of those inside bars. Uh, then we had the buy and uh, the stop and reverse, uh, which is how we got short on uh, May the 9th. And uh, uh, when we had this massive super bar on April the 21st, that was a good clue, as I've told you before, when you get this sort of volatility, volatility you really need to put on a trailing stop. Um, and uh, you, you don't want to uh, have all that lovely money sitting there at risk uh, of a reversal, which is exactly what's happened. Uh, interesting enough, despite that uh, volatility, and I mean, it's been crazy, hasn't it? Uh, the crash low, because that's what it was, uh, was 650. Um, and uh, for those of you who follow the Daniel Code charts, uh, which you all should, um, the uh, low uh, was on the chart was $6.65. Um, and uh, that's pretty well where it stopped, 10 ticks through it, amazing. Um, and it's now rallying, you can see the red lines on this chart, they're on the members charts as well. Uh, they are the uh, retracements uh, of an existing range and you can see the market's been uh, tagging along with that pretty nicely with uh, uh, today's high being uh, 1826 against the DC black line at 1836. Incredibly accurate. Uh, don't be fooled into thinking volatility um, 
uh, runs away with almost every other program. Volatility just destroys anyone's ideas about support and resistance. With the Daniel Code, it just gets better. The more volatility, the more accurate uh, they are, although uh, we only ever allow a 0.1% variance between the uh, markets and our uh, signal. So. <coughs> Um, ETFs, those of you who don't know, this, all this drama with um, oil um, uh, this week has been called, caused by an ETF. Uh, uh, the ETF is called OIL, o -I -L, and there's uh, three or four other oil-related ETFs. Um, but the real basis uh, behind ETFs is that they're put together by folks who understand that people are frightened of futures because it takes some... Um, uh, a little bit of brain power and a lot of dedication to understand futures. Um, and uh, what they're trying to do with ETFs is turn them into something that resembles a stock uh, because people are comfortable with stocks. So, so that's really what ETFs are about. I mean, they give you lots of other reasons, and there's some of them are good reasons. Uh, they go to very uh, uh, finite, and some of them are quite nuanced segments uh, of the market. <coughs> And they're used by uh, uh, traders like uh, Greg, who's with us today, uh, to uh, manage um, clients' portfolios. Um, I'm uh, not only not an admirer of them, I'm uh, uh, rather scornful of them. Uh, but that is only because of me, so don't, don't let me bias you completely. I mean, uh, I simply... Uh, I understand why people trade ETFs, and I know a lot of people who trade ETFs, uh, and they're frightened of futures. For the ones that have managed to turn futures contracts into an ETF fund, uh, then, of course, that requires that they actually know quite a bit about uh, futures trading. Um, and uh, the reality is, as we saw on the oil ETF this week, uh, they don't know. Uh, and... Um, uh, I, I call it it's the niche market of choice for stupid people. Uh, that excludes uh, that excludes Greg, of course, who's a wonderful man, um, and he's uh, going to learn the Daniel Code hopefully. But uh, the vast majority of people I know who trade ETFs are people who don't really understand markets. They understand stocks, and they're looking for something that looks like a stock and feels like a stock, and that's why they're trading ETFs. So. Uh, the, there are many, many ETFs. They come in all shapes and sizes. They're designed to mirror certain markets. Uh, some of them are designed to um, highlight a particular segment uh, within that market. Uh, but basically, they're designed to look like a stock on the basis of the great unwashed uh, have some understanding and faith in stocks and shares because of the uh, endless uh, constant propaganda that they get. Um, and um, some of these um, ETFs include futures contracts. Uh, some of them are designed to mirror uh, futures markets. Some of them actually use futures contracts, uh, as this ETF oil does. So, uh, Janet, if you're with us, uh, here is Thomas. Margins, 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 scary stuff. Could I please comment? Yes, I certainly will talk about margins. Um, I don't know if Janet's with us, but she asked me a couple of questions about... Um, uh, the well, she asked me a couple of questions about the uh, oil market. Um, let me see if she's here. No, uh, she may be with us uh, later, or she may um, have a look at this uh, on the uh, recording. For those uh, of you um, who are new with us, we always record these uh, videos. Um, uh, now and again, it's been known to happen. We lose one because the technology doesn't work, uh, which is, as a Luddite, I fully understand. Uh, but 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, uh, we record these uh, free uh, webinars and they're posted on the website the next day. <laughs> so um, some of these include futures contracts, and this uh, ETF oil did include a futures contract. So uh, this week, <coughs> that particular contract... <coughs> <clears throat> went into settlement and uh, in a futures contract almost all of them these days are cash settled but this one isn't um, and uh, uh, you would have to have uh, either produced uh, or taken a delivery of um, 
uh, uh, X thousand barrels uh, of crude oil to the specification um, in the contract. And there were a whole lot of folks uh, in this market who were short, uh, I should say, who were long oil, uh, who had to take delivery of oil uh, because, but it was very difficult. The um, uh, oil storage in um, uh, Oklahoma, uh, it, Cushing is the town in Oklahoma that has the massive, massive uh, oil storages. Um, that's uh, uh, pretty near full. Uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, spare storage around. Uh, so the negative price that this uh, finished up being on the settlement uh, was a function of uh, the cost of storing, take, taking delivery of and storing that oil. Uh, and uh, the media, who also don't understand futures contract, ate it up. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have a... Uh, we have a um, uh, climate uh, where uh, we have far too much time for the media so they're always desperate to fill up some space so they jump on something like this which they don't understand. <coughs> One of the people <coughs> I should say who got dreadfully burnt with this uh, for you Thomas was Interactive Brokers. Um, now most US brokers uh, can't, uh, uh, don't have the mandate to handle Canadian clients. Uh, so a lot of our, cli our Canadian clients, uh, of whom we have uh, many, uh, uh, trade uh, with interactive brokers who do have uh, the ability to uh, handle Canadian clients. And for the last uh, ten week or 10 days or so, uh, maybe longer, uh, their margins that interactive brokers have been demanding are just crazy. Uh, like double, uh, literally. Um, uh, I had a, um, a long talk to uh, uh, someone about it. It might have been Thomas or it might have been Dean, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, interested brokers have been asking literally double the margin. Um, and this has been going on for uh, some little time. Uh, and uh, it, it made trading just absolutely impossible uh, in many markets. Um, and I said in this conversation, uh, was, um, you know, it looks to me like they just don't want you to trade. And it turns out um, that was the site, that was the uh, no initiating trade, no initiating trades now on oil, QM only closing trades. Yeah, uh, what else? We've got Ameritrade Ameri Brokers stopped all trading as a business decision on Wednesday. Thank you, Juan. Uh, good stuff. Um, uh, and uh, they've got their pants uh, pulled down. Uh, they've uh, uh, admitted to an $88 million loss uh, just on their uh, oil contracts uh, from clients who uh, uh, lost more than uh, they had on margin, uh, which uh, shows you that um, uh, they weren't doing a very good job of staying on top of uh, where their clients were in their position. But they've had a massive loss, <coughs> Ameritrade brokers might have as well. I'm sure there are others who will. No one ever wants to own up to uh, um, having their pants taken down. Um, but um, uh, the ETF oil, I mean, the, the people who uh, uh, manage it uh, and underwrite it, well, some part of it, I guess, not the dollar part, um, uh, they're working feverishly to put other all sorts of other products into the ETF to try and stay liquid and avoid the inevitable, which uh, is going to be a problem. Uh, they'll have to close that thing down. Uh, it's just been a total disaster. Um, and um, uh, the people who are in there uh, trading ETFs, I mean, uh, the, all the people <laughs> all the people who were long oil on the ETF, um, um, they simply didn't understand it was based on a futures contract, and the futures contract required settlement. Um, it's settlement in specie, in kind, uh, of, in oil. Uh, lots of it, barrels of it, a thousand barrels of it. Um, and it's quite extraordinary, isn't it, that there's so much stupid money around this world. Um, anyway, um, I've never found any of it. It always seems to me pretty hard to get. But <laughs> uh, just uh, what, a, what a turn up. So those of you who are fretting about oil, uh, the one at the market we trade, don't. Um, it'll be fine. Uh, it'll rally a bit now and uh, uh, it'll all be uh, happiness and light in due course. Uh, in the meantime... <laughs> We're getting a bit of a present at the pump, um, and uh, uh, eventually the uh, uh, service station can be forced to uh, actually give us the a reasonable price on uh, petroleum. It's down, it's way down, but it's not where it should be uh, based on the price of oil. Uh, so um, 
a lot of the stuff I've uh, put up here for you to read, folks, come from Zero Hedge. Um, if you haven't yet used Zero Hedge, you should. I've uh, uh, been a, a reader of theirs till, since the day they started. Um, and they're, uh, it, it, it's run by a guy who's anonymous. I actually know who he is. He's an interesting bloke. He, uh, he was a, um, had some difficulty with the regulators uh, in his position um, as a, a pretty serious trader. Uh, and he started uh, Zero Hedge. He's a very clever guy, uh, hugely knowledgeable, uh, partic in particular about uh, uh, some uh, pretty esoteric things in uh, bonds and uh, uh, what have you. He's a real expert. And um, uh, he's, uh, it, it, it's, um, it's free, it's uh, on the website. And um, he's got a, a suitably cynical view about markets, which is uh, quite refreshing, uh, but he's uh, one uh, who uh, is, uh, uh, certainly knows the truth, so he has a uh, cynical view about them uh, and uh, uh, writes very well. Uh, okay, so uh, here's uh, the last report starting to come out. Um, BNP Paribas has done hundreds of millions, uh, as he says, to exactly nobody's surprise. Uh, traders at the Paris-based bank, which together with its biggest competitor, uh, Socchen Societe Generale, uh, had long carved out a niche in sophisticated derivative markets, uh, which work great as long as the market levitates unperturbed and suffer massive losses once the big spikes. Uh, they lost an estimated 200 uh, million euros on equity deliveries. Um, the axiom that French banks always blow up when volatility jumps was confirmed again after Bloomberg reported the other French bank, Societe Generale, also lost hundreds of millions of euros uh, on stock trades, mainly deri deri derivatives. Uh, this is a little mark about JP Morgan uh, that was in uh, today's Zero Hedge, quietly uh, reported uh, that it's halted all non-paycheck protection programs based loan issuances for the foreseeable future. Uh, the, uh, obviously, that we, he predicted that they would temporarily suspend all non-government backed off loans uh, because the bank expected a default tsunami to hit coupled with a full-blown depression that wiped out the value of assets pledged to collateralize the loan. I don't think that's going to happen, but um, uh, I think there's uh, more drama rather than less uh, still to come down the road somewhere. Uh, this is what's happened with uh, delinquencies on mortgages uh, in the US. Um, and uh, gig say, yeah, but you can't go anywhere. What a deal. <laughs> That's right. You've got the lovely oil price and we can't drive anywhere, can we? Uh, Queensland's closed its borders. Um, and uh, I guess you can uh, drive north and drive south to big, big state as... Uh, uh, as yours is a uh, gig, but uh, uh, we're all uh, cars are sitting in the garage doing nothing. Uh, mortgages, um, a big, big problem in the US, um, and it's uh, also going to be the same problem uh, everywhere else, including Australia. Uh, the government has uh, allowed, um, for the first time ever to my knowledge, uh, it's allowing uh, folks to uh, tap into their uh, superannuation savings. We have mandatory uh, savings here called superannuation. Uh, where 9.5% uh, uh, of your um, paycheck is uh, deducted uh, without your consent and put into a, uh, a managed fund um, and uh, the, uh, your employer matches that. Uh, and uh, the figures on the number of people who are going to take their uh, suit some money out their superannuation to pay their uh, mortgages is uh, massive. Um, uh, this is another story from uh, Zero Hedge today. I mean, I've, I've been chuckling all day. A, dist a distressed investor should, as the name implies, be able to successfully navigate markets and deliver outside returns on distressed assets, especially during distressed times. Alas, in the case of Blackstone's distressed credit arm GSO capital markets, the opposite is true. In the first quarter of 2020, the fund delivered its worst quarterly performance ever. GSO wants a wrecking ball in the distressed debt space and the company that single-handedly broke the CDS market. Even Goldman Sachs accused it of destroying the credit default drop market back in 2018. It's, uh, it's uh, negative 30.3% uh, in Q1. Uh, alas, it appears that GSO bought too early and is now waiting for the waves of bailouts to at least push asset prices to its cost basis. Um, 
you know, this is the theme. I've been talking about this for 11, we 11 years. Um, uh, everyone uh, thinks uh, I'm... Uh, uh, everyone... Uh, Tom, Tom, Tom's just arrived uh, from his uh, uh, sojourn, uh, his retreat in Florida. Good to have you with us, uh, Tom. And uh, uh, I do hope your uh, partner up in uh, New York is uh, recovering. He's had a bad trot. Um, anyway, um, uh, I've been uh, yodeling for uh, the whole 11 years that uh, the Daniel Code has been public, that uh, these big companies have feet of clay and the boy... Uh, you're risking some problems when you let them handle your money now. Uh, Blackstone, of course, is managing a huge part of the uh, uh, U.S. Fed's, uh, the U.S. government's um, uh, bailout uh, problems at the moment. Uh, so they're the most highly, one of the most highly regarded forms firms in the world. Uh, but uh, shows you bias. Uh, had to have a bias and got it wrong. Uh, and this, of course, I mean, this is just so special. Um, uh, this is a guy talking about the uh, uh, distressed asset fund we just talked been talking about. Uh, and this was the guy who they spoke and say, uh, where we are now, it's a better investment environment than it was before both the leverage loan and high yield markets sold off. Those markets have recovered some ground, but there are still plenty of names that are trading at big discounts. So for our distressed arm, that creates opportunities. Uh, which uh, which is just what anyone else who is down thirty percent would say: focus on the future, ignore the past, and that's their mantra. And it goes on all the time, all the time. Uh, that's the uh, business model du jour. Um, and uh, you know that I um, have a scant regard for economists, and uh, uh, for many years I've called them witch doctors, which is uh, probably complimentary to most of them. Um, and uh, uh, they, uh, there was unprecedented damage to the Eurozone. It's getting wiped out as well. Uh, against this virus lockdown, slumping global demand, shortage of staff and inputs. Uh, said Chris Williamson, chief business economist at IHS Market, the ferocity of the slump has also surpassed that thought imaginable by most economists. Well, you know, if you couldn't even imagine that this market had a capacity to uh, drop, <laughs> and he, honestly, uh, on a macro scale, it hasn't dropped that much. This is this is just a so far. This is just a pullback. This is a, a, what we're seeing in equities market. This is not a crash yet. Uh, it might be. It might come. Uh, but the ferocity of the sump has also surpassed that thought imaginable by most economists. Well, honestly, uh, that pretty well tells you uh, that uh, economists. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're very valued. They're paid a lot of money. Um, I don't know why. Uh, and uh, that we've been talking about is the U.S. situation. We're switching now to uh, the southern uh, lands, Australia and um, uh, New Zealand. This is uh, fund managers taking a beating. Um, uh, they had a minus 20% top quartile group posting losses of 18.8, bottom group minus 22.8. Um, and uh, if you have a look at this, the uh, list of outperformers they've got at the top um, uh, lost somewhere between 10% um, uh, all the way down to 21%. Until they get to 25%, they're not uh, considered to have been hit hard. Uh, so uh, good luck with that, folks. <coughs> so <coughs> almost most traders also have a bias, but we never have a bias. Uh, we're neither bulls or bears, as you know. Uh, any bias is restricted to our existing trade. Uh, if we're long, we hope the market goes up. If we're short, uh, we hope the market goes down. But our real business is looking for the next trade signal, which will reverse our position. In other words, what we do is we try to stay very, very close to the market. And uh, in my view, that's the safe way to trade. Um, so uh, there are two key elements to the Daniel Code. The first is price with the extraordinary accuracy of the DC numbers for support and resistance setting up the high probability turns. Now, I've told you uh, we put out these numbers on the charts uh, twice a week for you. Um, and uh, we also, for those markets where we don't publish charts, but which we do cover, uh, we do the work for you. We post up the signals every day if there are signals there. Um, and we allow 0.1%. That's all we allow for variance uh, between the uh, targeted price 
uh, and uh, the uh, real price. Now the second um, uh, key element Daniel Code is time, uh, where the DC time signals create a standalone trading program. Um, and that's uh, what I teach you uh, guys who have done tutorials. Have a look at this, accuracy is our business. There's the, um, uh, there's the S&P high, gone to the wrong page, this one's very jumpy today. Uh, this is the uh, February high. I'll just get the, con the contract up here. Uh, here it is. So there's the high. Um, and um, yes, that's not seven. We need more than that support. Uh, and that uh, that high uh, was the signal uh, came on Wednesday, February the 19th, uh, was posted at 7.30 that evening. Um, and that high there you can see was 3395 uh, and the high of the bar was 3394. That's one point or four ticks uh, variant out of a market that's at 3,394. Um, extraordinary stuff. Um, and then uh, we picked the low as well. The next uh, blue line signal came uh, on the day of the low, uh, which was uh, uh, right here on Monday, uh, March the 23rd. Uh, the uh, low in the market was uh, 2174 on the uh, futures contract. The uh, Daniel Code blue line was at 2173, exactly the same variance as we had the high. One point or four ticks. Um, amazing. Uh, and we've now had this rally up and we actually got uh, a form of a blue line signal at uh, uh, this recent high here uh, on uh, uh, the 4th, uh, the, uh, April the 17th I should say, uh, where uh, we had a little bit more variance there. We had a close uh, that day of uh, 2869 uh, against uh, uh, 2874. It's right at the very edge of our um, allowable variance, but um, I took some comfort from the fact we posted that signal on the uh, Monday evening, uh, and uh, the next day the high was 2875.5. Um, so um, uh, we're currently on a sell. We'll see what happens. Uh, now, amazing as these numbers look, they are actually support and resistance, and all of our signals are mute uh, on uh, quantum. None of these signals uh, tell you how far the market's going to go, uh, but uh, we have various types of signals. The TO3 signals are turn signals. The TO3 plus signals are turn, the turn signals and some continuation signals. The blue line signals are our strongest signal, and they're the ones where we anticipate that we will probably get a change of trend. They're our most important uh, signal. Uh, and they're valid for three days, including the day of posting. Um, we then have our 6S program, which is daily signals, tries to keep you in the run for uh, the long run when the markets move a bit. Uh, and then we have our uh, fourth seal commentary uh, on uh, gold and S&P and crude oil. Um, and uh, all of that uh, is uh, waiting for you at the Daniel Code website. Uh, but <coughs> none of these signals speak to quantum. Uh, you can just get a one or two bar counter trend from some of these signals. The same, exactly the same signal will give you these massive uh, trades we've had recently. So the signals give you the turn, but your trading technique uh, then governs uh, your ability to stay in that trade um, and in some cases uh, to get out of it and get back in. Uh, right here, we actually had a minor buy signal, uh, got us long for two days and then uh, got us short again um, at the right time. All of that is possible and that's uh, how it worked at the Daniel Code. Uh, so that's the accuracy of the business. Um, here is something to look at with our time signals. Uh, this is gold. Uh, this is gold uh, back to 2017. Uh, it's a very, <coughs> very long term uh, chart of gold. I showed uh, something like this to uh, Kyle, uh, who's doing a tutorial. I showed something like this to him uh, two days ago and he was very excited. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, it is quite extraordinary, isn't it? This is using um, a, one of our larger time frames. Uh, this is the uh, basic uh, 
the basic measurement of time in the Daniel Code lexium is 29.6, uh, which should mean something to uh, many of you. Uh, but this is just simply taking a 29.6 time cycle um, and putting on uh, the signal that it's created. Uh, now, we don't actually trade this because uh, uh, the risk uh, is uh, too big for future trading, uh, but that's where we start. And then we move down the uh, time scale to smaller and smaller uh, doses of time until we uh, get to a level where we really are uh, in tune with what the market's doing. But uh, overall, there's the broad look at time trading time signals, and uh, uh, it is it is extraordinary. Okay, so uh, we get exactly the same thing on Forex. Uh, this is uh, time, DC time signals on Forex. This happens to be Euro USD. Um, and you can see that it sold pretty well everywhere you want it to sell and you bought everywhere it wants to buy. Um, and the uh, only errors here, you can see I put a, um, a, a cross here saying fail. It can't quite see it. It does say fail there, there, and there. And all of those failures um, actually were signals that, that, that were elected. They started to go the way the signal suggested. Um, and then uh, it turned into an outside bar, which is why we have uh, as one of our trading rules that on, a, on a, uh, an outside bar on a new signal, uh, you uh, must, must, must uh, stop and reverse. Now, I know some of you, and if you're not able to do that on your platform, just put on your stop loss. Um, it, it will uh, reduce your um, earnings a bit, but it's not terminal. It doesn't uh, happen so often that uh, it uh, ruins the benefits of trading futures. Um, so uh, we're now looking at, um, make sure I haven't skipped you one here. As I said, this thing's very twitchy today. <coughs> we're looking at um, Australian uh, markets. Um, and I mean, I, I, I don't know how these people keep getting away with it. I don't know why journalists keep, uh, well, I suppose, uh, the, the hedge funds, the big investment companies are the people who do the advertising in their publications, whether it be newspapers or television, um, and they get their bills paid. I guess that's why there's this uh, uh, ridiculous reverence uh, for these uh, uh, big players, uh, the people who are managing your money. Uh, this one uh, is a classic capitals alpha fund uh, with an impressive 10.4% March return. Uh, and ASX listed concentrated leaders fund returned a minus 14.8 in March, but it out, outperformed its benchmark by almost 6%. And that, that, is, uh, that is posted as justification. Um, I've, I see so much of this stuff. Uh, yeah, dreadful result. Uh, you lost a lot of money. But by the way, we outperformed our benchmark. What possible good? That's their mandate. They're, 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 they've agreed that their product will run against a, try to mimic a, um, uh, a, uh, a benchmark, uh, S and P or something else, whatever it is. Um, and uh, their their aim is to outperform the benchmark. Now that's touted, uh, touted, I should say, as a good thing. Uh, to me, it's totally ridiculous. Um, Tom, Tom, Tom might have a different view on that. He's a wealth manager, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just would never have the uh, the front to say you've lost fifteen percent. But hey, uh, we outperformed my benchmark by almost six percent, uh, which means uh, we only lost um, eight uh, percent, just uh, or six percent in this case, isn't it? Just totally ridiculous. You've lost money, but hey, we did well for you. And you're going to pay us fees for that level of performance. I mean, it's just, it's totally ridiculous. Nobody will ever come out and say it. Uh, but um, uh, that's what the big boys do. And they're supported by the public because the public are the great unwashed. They listen to what they're told. And the media uh, are always, and I do mean always, banging the drum uh, for uh, these folks who uh, run hedge funds or manage funds. And it's just nonsense. Uh, Yarra Capital Management. The Yarra is a river uh, in the state of Victoria, which is uh, the southern state in Australia, not somewhere I live. Um, and the Yarra is famous as being the river that flows upside down. It's got more mud on the surface uh, than it's got on the bottom, according to people who are critical of uh, Victoria. Anyway, it's a big river. Uh, Yarra Capital Management's performance 
uh, in the Australian Equities Broad Cap Fund. Isn't that, I mean, what a name. It was adversely affected by its exposure to energy and infrastructure stocks, stocks including Transurban and Sydney Airport. You just don't get it, do you? The fund was adversely affected by its exposure. It had that exposure because its managers had bought into it and your managers hadn't hedged. What my favourite uh, expression is, hedge funds don't hedge, manage, money managers don't manage. Now, I don't want to say that with uh, a totally broad brush. Uh, we have uh, clients with us today uh, who are money managers, uh, Greg and Tom Tom in particular, and I'm absolutely sure those comments do not apply to them. I'm sure they're hedged up to their eyeballs as professional people should be. If not, give me a call. Any of you who are interested in hedging, I'll show you how to do it. Hedging with futures is ridiculously easy. Um, and and um, other funds that have had a tough trot, you know, isn't that sort of a nice gentle word? Well, you've had a tough trot. The L1 Capital Long Short Fund, which was down 23% in March. <coughs> and has tumbled 34% this calendar year. Think about that. This is the L1 Capital Long Short Fund. Well, uh, it obviously didn't read its own uh, description uh, or even its name. Uh, it didn't get short, otherwise it would have made money when the markets pulled back. In fact, it uh, uh, had its pants pulled down and had a spanking because they didn't hedge, because hedge funds can't hedge, money managers don't manage. Hopeless. Dreadful. Any any consequence to pay for that? No. Money will keep rolling in. Uh, you know, uh, it'll uh, just keep going on and on and on. Uh, and uh, I like this in particular. Uh, you don't, uh, I'm sure most of you don't uh, follow Australian uh, uh, market moves, but um, we have a very dominant uh, air, aircraft uh, flying a carrier here called Qantas. Uh, Queensland and Northern Territory Aviation Services called Qantas or Qantas. Uh, the Americans say, um, as uh, the pilot, the American pilot described it to me once, he said, is that the one with the big rat on its ass? <laughs> and, <laughs> it has a kangaroo painted on its tail fin, uh, which uh, uh, Americans sometimes think is a big rat. Uh, anyway, uh, they won't thank me for saying that. Um, and uh, uh, it's the big dominant player, it was owned by the government, it was a monopoly, uh, and uh, is now very dominant, uh, very big company, and uh, we have a small competitor uh, called Virgin, Virgin Australia. Virgin Australia was started by Richard Branson. Uh, he now only owns a very small part of it. Uh, he gets the paid a fee for using the naming rights, of course, um, and it's gone through various iterations. Essentially, it's owned by other aviation companies now, um, a couple of which are Chinese and, and uh, Singapore Airways as well. Um, and uh, uh, Research House Chart West this week released data showing super funds, these are superannuation funds, this is where you, if you're an Australian where you're compulsorily deducted must be in a super fund, uh, your 9.5% is deducted and given to these guys. I mean. One of the problems about the reason that these funds don't hedge, and, and I actually have had uh, to talk to people who've gone around and talked to these managers and said, you know, you should be hedging. This is how you do it. They don't want to know. Um, and it's literally, you're going to think this is an exaggeration. It's not. There are so, the buckets of money that come in every week from this compulsory deduction from everyone's pay packet into these superannuation funds, they have got more money than they know what to do with, and they've certainly got more money than they uh, are capable of uh, looking after and caring. Uh, anyway, uh, this week, Chant West said, uh, showed super funds gave up 10% in the March quarter, the worst return since the introduction of compulsory super nearly three decades ago. Uh, and in fact, it was worse than that, as you saw from the uh, the uh, uh, screenshot I gave you earlier. Uh, separately, this is the one that will make you laugh, retail and sophisticated investors may also be up in arms after smaller advisory firms, including Bell Potter. Bell Potter is one of the biggest advisory firms in the country, nothing small about it. Uh, Crestone Wealth Management and Escala Partners 
pitched and sold them bonds in Virgin Australia ahead of the airline being placed in administration this week. So, uh, <coughs> you know, they really are in a, <coughs> a terribly tough position uh, because uh, they're not flying. Uh, and that's the end of it. There will be some, there's some restricted flying going on uh, uh, for the government to uh, try to move people around and repatriate people. But basically, uh, the airlines are all in a world of hurt. hurt. And uh, these guys, uh, Virgin, uh, they were in a pretty good position about four or five years ago, but what they've been doing is sucking it all out in dividends. <laughs> and um, they've distributed everything in dividends, um, and now they go to the government and say, give us a bailout. The government in this case, of course, is you and me. Uh, the government doesn't have any money except what it collects from us in taxes. Um, and uh, it's uh, grossly irresponsible. Um, and there's some other, um, uh, lots of these uh, high-profile, uh, 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 well-known uh, folks and companies are uh, uh, put, off, uh, put off their employees, uh, putting them on the public purse. So go to the government's uh, 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 bailout programs to, to get some of your uh, uh, wages uh, from the government. Uh, but us, uh, we, the great players, we're not going to put our hands in our pocket. Um, uh, Pierre's, uh, Pierre, uh, what is his name? Uh, he writes for the um, English uh, newspapers, Pierre Morgan, I think. Very, very uh, uh, cutting article uh, last week about uh, people like the Beckhams, if you're even aware of them, they're a British uh, couple. He's a uh, retired uh, soccer player. Uh, I dare not call it football. He's a soccer player, retired. His wife um, is um, a... Uh, unprofitable uh, fashion uh, designer uh, but uh, they've managed to accumulate massive wealth themselves but uh, they put all their staff off uh, go to the government uh, and get on the government program and this is just being uh, repeated everywhere 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 it's terrible uh, it shows that uh, it shows there is very little morality in the world which uh, doesn't surprise me uh, but uh, may surprise you these uh, well-known names um, uh, uh, not, uh, not really what you'd call terribly worthwhile human beings, in my view. Uh, folks, watch your protective stops. Uh, in these days, markets with growing volatility, uh, the average daily range is getting big. In fact, it's getting huge. You should calculate the average daily range for all markets that you're interested in and substitute a fixed or a trailing dollar stop that is no more than one and a half times the average daily range if the suggested stop is larger. Be safe in your trading. That's, uh, that's the message. Uh, it's getting uh, wild and woolly out there in some markets, um, and uh, I think it's going to be more so <coughs> in the future comes up. But uh, you can be sure that the Daniel Code signals uh, will be in front of the trend and keep you safe and with the trend uh, at all times. Uh, Tom uh, Thomas, for you, talking about uh, interactive brokers and its uh, stupidity on uh, margins. If you have to stay with them, any of you, just uh, look at the mar look at the market where that's not happening, uh, and that that won't last forever. They've 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 lost 88 million uh, from one client alone. There's another 500 million uh, from that debacle uh, on the ETF that uh, hasn't really come to light yet. I mean, it must have come to light. It's the nature of trading, but uh, no one quite knows where it is yet. But Go to other markets where they're not doing that, uh, ramping up the uh, margins, um, and uh, be assured it won't it won't last for long. Uh, learn to trade now is a great time uh, if you are locked up, locked down, can't do your normal thing. Learn to trade for goodness' sake! I implore you, learn to trade. Be a regular money maker. The markets are still open; they'll always be open. You can make money every day from the security of your own house. Uh, or if you get really good at it, you can start a business doing it and make even more money. Uh, but do learn to trade, secure your financial future. Uh, if you want to be a super trader, um, just um, uh, just uh, uh, join the elite. Jo email me, jneedham at thedanielcode.com, jneedham at thedanielcode.com. Let me have your phone number and country so I don't call you in the middle of the night. Um, and uh, I'll be happy to talk to you about your trading and talk to you about doing a Daniel Code tutorial, which will make you an elite trader. Um, uh, some of our very, very best clients came to me and said, never seen a chart. Uh, Frank DB, 
<coughs> who now <coughs> does most of the work on the fourth seal, uh, he was one of them. Um, he came to me and said, I've never seen a chart in my life, but he said, I like what you, the way you write, so I've come to learn, and uh, look at him now, he's a, he's a super trader. Uh, you will need uh, some determination and dedication. Uh, uh, I will uh, supply the rest. If you can count to three, don't be frightened of numbers, because even though we use a lot of numbers, uh, it's all done for you. Uh, you'll see the numbers. We put them on the charts. We back you up with the signals if you miss them. Uh, uh, if you can count to three, <coughs> Do excuse me, a bit of hay fever. If you can count to three and you can tell the difference between blue and red, uh, I can make you a great trader. If you haven't already, please uh, go ahead and uh, go to the Daniel Code website, www.thedanielcode.com. Click on for a free trial. Uh, you can see everything that we do and uh, see what, what we do will suit you. Um, and uh, any problems at all, uh, email Terry at support at the Daniel code dot com uh, and uh, he will assist you. He's a very uh, talented and nice young guy. Uh, compliance, this is important folks. Uh, remember to read the compliance statement which says uh, almost everyone loses their money in the first three months. That's the normal one. My version is almost everyone loses all their money in the first month because they haven't taken the time to learn how to trade. Uh, and I can, it's considerably harder than learning to drive a car but if you follow through on our programs, you will become a safe and profitable, consistent trader. But please, I beg of you, do not risk real money on markets until you have learned uh, to trade. Okay, let's see what we've got here on questions. Can I talk? Can I talk about rough rice, uh, uh, Alan? I've I've never traded it. Uh, uh, here we are. Uh, oh, Dean, thanks for the tip to switch to striker. Okay. Uh, right, uh, all of you Canadians, uh, let me bring up the website, please. Uh, this is uh, uh, from Dean, who's a, a member, tutorial guy. Uh, and um, here we are. Here's the Daniel Code. Let's go to contacts. Okay. <clears throat> Up here, folks, this is your guy. Uh, his name is Dan Neenan, N-E-E-N-A-N. He's with Striker Securities in Chicago. Uh, I've been with Striker Securities for years and years and years. I know them well. I know them personally. Uh, their founder, John Galwas, was a absolutely legendary figure um, in the uh, futures trading business. Uh, was uh, on uh, the various boards of uh, the uh, markets that control uh, futures and was a, um, in fact, a um, advisor to government on many occasions about markets. Uh, John's uh, no longer uh, in Striker, but it's now run by his son William Galwas. William's a terrific chap. He's uh, a great friend of mine, um, uh, and their operating manager there is Dan Neenan, N W -E E N A N. Dan is a just a great guy. I've known him as long as I've known all of the others. Uh, that's their phone number in the U.S., 1-800-669-8838. That's in the U.S., uh, 1 is the code for the U.S., 800-669-8838, Stryker Securities. His email is dneenan at striker.com. Talk to Dan or talk to William. Tell them you're a Daniel Code client, uh, and uh, if you are uh, tied up with interactive brokers, uh, and getting screwed on commission. Uh, uh, I've referred Dean to uh, Stryker last week, and he's now written me, said, thanks for the tip to switch to Stryker. Canadians can now do business with them. Uh, they're first-class people. Make sure you tell them that you're Daniel Code uh, clients and that I referred you. Uh, so, Alan, <clears throat> no, I can't talk about rough rice. I've never traded it. Uh, I've certainly looked at it. Uh, uh, the margin is low. Um, I thought maybe the reason it's gone so high so far, I know nothing about it. But just make sure with some of these obscure ones that there's sufficient volume in there to trade. Uh, if you go to the <coughs> exchange report, the CME is most of them. Um, uh, you, you can see what the daily margin is. Make sure that the da daily rollover is. Make sure there's enough, uh, there's enough uh, volume there uh, for you to trade. Uh, one, 
uh, do you ever have situations where the volatility of the price action is just too rich uh, and you decide to step aside? Um, one, I don't anymore, but, you know, I've been doing this uh, for 30 years um, uh, and uh, uh, for large parts of my life um, uh, I've been um, an attorney specialising in commercial transactions um, and I've been the chairman of several public companies. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, those risks, uh, but I understand that most people wouldn't be. The main thing is, uh, if you either stand aside, um, there's, a, there's a famous saying, flat is also a valid position. You don't have to trade the market if you think they're going crazy or they're too volatile for you. Go to another market. Um, all markets are the same with the Daniel Code. Um, and um, uh, just watch, as I've told you in this last uh, webinar, never use more than one and a half times average daily range as your margin. If the margin is bigger, uh, you know, the, the, cor the, the correct place to place your stop, if you're buying a high below the low. Um, the only true points of support and resistance on a chart uh, are Daniel Code numbers and daily highs and lows. But if where we suggest with the program to put your stop, if that's too big for you, use a fixed dollar stop. Uh, or if you think it's against the trend, use a trailing dollar stop. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Akshay, uh, what's the view on 30-year bonds? Uh, is it uh, too early uh, to begin drawing a trading channel in the S&P? Uh, no, you can certainly draw a trading channel on the S&P. In fact, you should have a couple of them on by now. You'll have a down one and an up one at the moment on the daily chart. Um, uh, T-bonds uh, uh, seem to be in a bit of a quandary. Uh, and uh, they, they're just stalled out, really, I think, at the moment. They don't know what they're doing. Um, and uh, that's not surprising. Here we are. I've had very little price action. Uh, this is uh, US T-bonds. Yeah, uh, and they've, um, they're just uh, fiddling around up here. Uh, there's very little direction on this week. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, Thomas. Uh, L, okay, awesome. Uh, thanks, uh, John, from Thomas. Uh, Dan is very approachable. Oh, this is Dan Neenan. Uh, <coughs> this is from Janet. Janet, welcome. I was talking about you earlier <coughs> and you weren't quite with us then. <coughs> Have a look at the replay when Terry posted tomorrow. I've talked to you at length about the oil ETF um, and uh, not to worry about negative oil in the market we trade. I think it's very improbable. Um, Dan, uh, Janet has uh, got to Dan, says, Dan's very approachable. I'm very glad that they can now service Canadians. Great. Uh, here we are. Alan says, I would like to trade Forex. I can't find any way to get the data feed. Easy. Uh, I can't wait to get the data feed to work in Trade Navigator. Are you subscribed to the Forex data, Alan? I mean, I've used Trade Navigator for years and years and years. It's been fine. Uh, shoot me an email in, in a bit more detail, Alan, would you? And I'll, uh, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, Juan uh, said thanks. Thank you, my friend. Um, uh, they said that IB broker could, but if you're a UR citizen, you can open a four times account. I'm not quite sure what. The, oh, a Forex account. They said that IB Broker could, but if you are a US citizen, you can't open a Forex account. All right, well, um, don't be a US citizen. <laughs> it's pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm sure your imagination can work that out, mate. Um, uh, I know it's been a real limitation for a lot of our clients. It's been a real issue. And uh, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, interactive brokers have been good, uh, but now they've uh, lost their uh, money and lost their mind. Uh, so we'll just uh, have to see how that all works out. Uh, okay, and that's, uh, that's for it for me today. Janet, uh, Janet C has joined us. Thank you, Janet. I'm always uh, very keen to say hello to the ladies because we don't have many of them, but... Uh, uh, Janet uh, from Canada is with us, uh, as is uh, uh, Sue up in um, uh, up in uh, Canada. Uh, so that's it, folks, for the day. Thank you for uh, being with us. No, hang on, I've got more. Don't go. Wait, there's more. Uh, do you know any way I have been uh, trading in Sim the Forex, and it has been super nice.
that's good. Do I know any way that you can get in? Uh, let me talk to you about it, Alan. Um, uh, shoot me an email and I'll give you a call. Uh, Mike's with it. Uh, says, uh, thanks, John. That's good. Uh, Keith. Uh, oh, yeah, Keith, we're going to have a talk next week. I got your email. Thank you. Thank you for Mrs. Needham comes home today. Uh, have you, uh, let's see what else we've got here. I don't want to miss anyone. Uh, so much, uh, John. It's Women Harold likes my webinars. Oh, grand. Thank you, Harold. Great to have you, my friend. Uh, okay. And uh, Hank, uh, uh, have you done any research on broker risk? How, how safe is your, uh, this is uh, Andrew, Andrew McCain, uh, how safe is your broker? Make sure it's uh, one of the biggies. Um, uh, how safe is your money with the broker? Well, we only use uh, US brokers, mainly gain capital. Uh, they're huge. Uh, they're very, very good. Uh, there have been some uh, uh, nasty things over the years, haven't there? Uh, PFG um, and uh, uh, the one before them, been some nasty stuff. Uh, I mean, you got to assume that sometime or other <coughs> the auditors <laughs> from the government are going to catch up with all these gallywags. I think they largely have now. Um, I, I don't have any uh, concerns with it. Uh, but... Um, uh, if you're with uh, if you're with Gain, that's great. Uh, okay, thank you, Juan. I certainly will uh, give my be your best to Mrs. Needham and her recovery. Take care, folks. Thank you for being with us. Uh, PFG was a horror, wasn't it? Uh, all the best, folks. Have a wonderful weekend, uh, and uh, lovely to have you with us. Uh, and uh, I'll uh, might even talk to you next week if markets start getting volatile again. Uh, we normally do these. Um, uh, webinars fortnightly, uh, which means every two weeks. It's a British expression. Americans don't generally understand it, uh, but fortnightly means uh, 14 nights, of course, every two weeks, uh, which is when I do these. But um, I might put on extra one next week if things get volatile. If I do, I'll certainly send you an email, uh, let you know all about it. Uh, thank you, Gig, my friend. He's gone. Thank you for your post. And Tom, Tom, thank you to you, my friend. Take care, folks. Until next time, all the best.